Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It is May 7th, 2018, and today we're going to talk about 10 technologies to own the weather today, not in 2025. Um, we have all that technology today, they just don't want you to know about it. So what we're going to do is really break down these 10 technologies in graphic detail and all the links are already provided above in the details. I hope you guys will share this video. It's going to be very informative. And with that, I'd like to thank my patrons over at patreon.com. Um, this is my only way of getting supported for the work I'm doing right now. Everything I do is free. Um, there are no advertisements on climateviewer.com.org or weathermodificationhistory.com. So with your continued support, we will be able to grow um, climateviewer.com at all and uh, get the message out there. And what is that message? Um, it's about transparency and accountability. And that is exactly what I'm all about. Um, some of you may have caught my earlier video today, but this one was the video I intended to make tonight, and I'm not going to let anybody stop that from happening. So this Environmental Modification Accountability Act is an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification because this is all secret and done over your head on a daily basis, and secret wars can be waged um, with plausibly deniable weapons and nobody really wants to believe that that's even possible so on this same in my page if you scroll to just right here you're going to see an infographic that i created to sum up these 10 technologies and with an infographic comes a great article so that is the subject for today 10 technologies to own the weather today um most people have heard about chemtrails and maybe cloud seeding and ionospheric heaters um that's about the extent of it and most people have, have not heard of ionospheric heaters i'm just saying most people that are in the community um people who are interested in the subject and this was a, an article that pretty much sums it all up in one spot and that was the purpose of the infographic and this infographic is free to download please feel free to send it to anybody it's yours i made it for you um to show the big picture so what is that big picture we're going to go through it because um as i we say over at weathermodificationhistory.com those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it so first we're going to start with the past and two presidents and some pretty weird things they said first up we have John F. Kennedy, and if you click on the link there, you can come over to weathermodificationhistory.com and see President Kennedy United Nations Address on Weather Modification, where he says, if the Soviets control space, they can control Earth. Now, he said this in 1961. Pretty interesting stuff. He also said, we shall propose further cooperative efforts between all nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. John F. Kennedy. Now, before, he said that obviously before his untimely demise. And you can see video of that right over here. This is where we got it from, the John F. Kennedy Library. This is a real thing, really happened. Watch the video. I did have this up on YouTube. Um, but, of course, after posting this article, both of the YouTube videos of both Kennedy and Johnson were flagged down immediately, a uh, surprising coincidence. So we'll just have to go to the original source, as they say, and watch it there. But of course, that source is provided right here at the bottom. You can just click that JFK library right there. Um, and a couple associated documents. And thanks you. Um, shout out to Harold Save for mirroring both this video and the other one by Lyndon Johnson. And I made a little infographic for this one. Um, Dominic made this picture. I made this picture. Um, the other one is right here. Let's close those out and go over here. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. 
that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer. You heard it. To determine the cloud layer. Woo! That stinks of chemtrails. Again, shout out to Harold Say for putting this up on his website. Screw the censors. He mirrored the video. Um, by the way, Harold, mirror the other video for me so I can put that up there too. Appreciate you. Um, and he's at chemtrailsplanet.net, right? Chemtrailsplanet.net. Not what it said right there. So you guys show him some love for that. But regardless, he says um, he who controls the weather controls the world. 1962. This is not a coincidence. And we've come a long way since 1962. Um, from just good wishes from, you know, technocrat um, leaders of our country talking to the United Nations, talking to at a college commencement speech. Um, he said, from space, the masters of infinity would have the power to control the Earth's weather, to cause drought and flood, to change the tides and raise the levels of the sea, to divert the Gulf Stream and change the temperature climates to frigid. Change temperate climates to frigid. Freeze stuff. Melt stuff. Divert stuff. Power. That's what these technologies are really about. Power. So... First up on our list of 10 technologies are ionospheric heaters, sounding rockets, and satellites. And believe it or not, those are all related. And how are they related? They are space weather modification. What you modify above affects below. Um, changing the electrical uh, currents of the planet can, can allow you to divert jet streams, create pressure bro blocking zones, high pressure, low pressure, steer hurricanes, steer tornadoes with solar powered satellites um, as proposed by Bernard Eastland, the thunderstorm solar powered satellite, the list goes on. But Dr. Harry Wexler warned that the use of the technologies to modify stratospheric ozone or punch holes in the ionosphere could lead to worldwide weather issues. Reference number one. There are references at the bottom of this page. You guys know me. Um, after his sudden heart attack, the RAND Corporation suggested an increase in the use of sounding rockets to punch holes in the ionosphere and dump chemicals in space. I refer to this as chemtrails from space. And what they are doing above is the same as what they are doing below. Instead of calling it cloud seeding, it has been referred to as plasma seeding or magnetospheric modification, ionospheric modification, space weather modification, or geophysical warfare. Now, this is some very serious stuff. And a lot of people catch a lot of flag for even mentioning it. But if you want real references to prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt, Come over here to this article. It's at the top of the page. What kind of chemicals do they dump? Um, following the Project Westford Needles, Operation Argus, Starfish Prime, and the upper atmospheric nuclear explosions, they couldn't blow up the ionosphere anymore to do modifications, so it was illegal. Thank you to everybody who's live in chat. This is going to be a big one. I've been waiting a while. As you can see, this was written November, right after my birthday um, in 2017. I've been meaning to do this video multiple times. I did an early version of it. It was only five technologies. It's grown since then, as we can see. Um, but since then, since they banned up atmospheric nuclear explosions, um, they started dumping barium, strontium, lithium, trimethyl aluminum, sulfur hexafluoride, or SF6, the banned CFC chemical. Irony in that because changes in the ozone layer were bl mainly blamed on these um, uh, CFCs when Harry Wexler clearly warned that you know, sounding rockets and the like and punching holes in the ionosphere would lead to what we're having today, worldwide weather changes. And of course, you combine that with what Lyndon Johnson and Kennedy said about controlling space and that controlling weather, I think you get the picture already. So these ionospheric heaters allow people, um, you know, countries, individuals to destroy the Van Allen belts. Something uh, more gently referred to as radiation belt remediation or creating artificial aurora by sucking radiation out of space. 
Um, they can create artificial ionospheric mirrors or ways to uh, make a boiled portion of the ionosphere to reflect radio waves off of. Create ELF waves or extremely low frequency waves. These can be um, heard worldwide. Um, if you come to climateviewer.org and you check out the map, you can see right up here, click on Climate Viewer Maps and then Atmospheric Sensors and EMF Sites. And then you can turn on Ionospheric Heaters, Missile Defense Radars, Star Wars Space Fence. Shout out to Lana Freeland, Super Darn or the Super Dual Auroral Radar Network in yellow, um, the Missile Defense are in black, and Digisons, Ionisons around the world, they're the green little markers with the white stripes. And then uh, what else we got on here? ELF, VLF transmission sites. Now if you want to see these, you just come down to Base Globe, excuse me, click on Base Globe and then click on Satellite and you can bring up the satellite for that and actually fly down and look at these ELF sites yourself like um, Jim Creek right here which is in a valley and as you can see there are antennas all through the valley and you can see the power and specs and all that stuff on it. It took me three years to create these maps. It's nothing to shake a stick at. Um, and I consider myself an expert on these. So if you find one that's not on my map, and as you can see, my map is worldwide, and this took a lot of time in Google Earth to put together, these ionospheric heaters and microwaves are a worldwide phenomenon. The most powerful being the ones in red, as you can see here, they are the ionospheric heaters that are the most powerful. And uh, other... Um, you know, broadcast towers from around the world. Just take a look. Lots. I found photos. I put all this information in there. Please dig in. It's a hell of a ride. Um, but these ELF waves are used to create standing waves, shear alvin waves, magnetosonic waves, very low frequency waves that are used to modify not only um, weather, which they have the possibility to do, to, to influence your um, brain, to, to influence your mood, to speak obviously to submarines on the bottom of the ocean as they claim that's the only person purpose for it. But regardless, create plasma clouds in the sky, create air glow using rocket exhaust plumes and high frequency radio waves to punch holes in the ionosphere as mentioned earlier by, warned by Harry Wexler before they helped him have a heart attack before he could warn everybody modifies the magnetic properties of our planet to probe underground structures just did a video on how they were probing under north korea's mountain and that possibly could have caused the earthquakes that eventually destroyed the nuclear program there see that one did harp uh destroy north korea's nuclear program protecting against emp and that's their reason that they sold it to congress you know hey help us fund this darpa navy u.s air force harp facility in gakona alaska and we could protect against solar flares and emp from space by sucking out that radiation with radiation belt remediation you can't make this stuff up um so here's some photos to go along with this you know back in the day it was called uh the you know burning glass or the mirror in space space mirrors what the artificial ionospheric mirror what bae systems calls the laser developed atmospheric lens um right here you can see multiple instrument studies and chemical releases and heating at arecibo this is a satellite that dumps those chemicals into space and then the arecibo ionospheric heater heats those up over here you can see the charged aerosol release experimental rocket release experiment and it you know dump series of you know chemical trails chemtrails from space and as you can see right there is a photo of that chemtrail glowing in the ionosphere and upper atmosphere so what kind of chemtrails there are several of them you can see them here this is a trimethyl aluminum one luminous vapor trail of trimethyl aluminum reveals neutral wind shear gravity waves and instabilities in high latitude upper atmosphere um right here we have a lithium one now a lot of you heard about the chemtrails over wallops where the guy said uh deploy the chemtrails and he was you know referring to a sounding rocket well the reason they use lithium is it is of the chemicals they dump the only one that is visible during daylight 
and that is why they use lithium during the day in the middle and upper atmosphere. Um, pretty fascinating stuff, pretty scary stuff, but it's kind of ironic that people talk about chemtrails all the time and don't know about chemtrails from space. So that's why I'm going to beat this dead horse till you do. Um, cloud in the upper left hand part of the image is due to a barium release. The purple red part is the ionized component which has become elongated along the Earth's magnetic field lines. The purple blue cloud that surrounds the red ionized barium and a combination of neutral barium and strontium. The blue and white trail in the lower portion of the image is trimethyl aluminum vapor trail that reveals neutral wind trails as a function of high altitude credit NASA. That's a barium chemtrail in space. That is a magnetic field line, which is invisible unless they dump barium into it. So they dump barium in space so they can see the Van Allen belts. Um, kind of like how they dump chemicals in your body when you go to get an MRI. They need to see it with magnets. Well, this is the same idea. Chemtrails in space and magnets. But of course, um, Secretary of Defense William Cohen warned Others are engaged even in an ecotype of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. And I think now we all know what he was talking about. And that was right here with the heart facility using it as a wind tunnel to determine the feasibility and the engineering specifications of a mitigation system against high altitude electromagnetic pulse hemp. Heart radiation belt remediation satellite threat due to high altitude nuclear detonation at the Eisenhower Institute. Links are provided right below. Please check out my whole video series on this, um, Chemtrails from Space. You can see that simply by clicking here. The video will load and you will see that there is a playlist on the side which has Chemtrails from Space Part 1 and Part 2 along with some of these sounding rocket experiments like Atrex, the lithium thing we were talking about, Poker Flat Rocket Range, and the list goes on. And over here on the other side, my other playlist, Harp Explained, where you can learn all about Harp and how it works, how Harp really works, Harp and Mind Control, the Laser Developed Atmospheric Lens, Project Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, um, and the list goes on. High Volt, Draining the Van Allen Belts, um, Space Weather Modification, crazy stuff. Um, Bonus videos, the J2X doghouse rocket at Stennis Air Force Base, which is known as the Cloud Making Rocket. Watch those videos on YouTube right there, and there's our references just for the first section. And as you can see, I'm a stickler for the details. So go through there, check out NASA's sounding rocket page. That's where I got these tracer trail um, images from, and a whole bunch more links. So moving on to the next one, lasers. And this is what I previously mentioned, the laser developed atmospheric lens, which is similar to HARP's ionospheric mirror. Um, this is a way to create a magnifying glass in space using a laser by painting a grid pattern on the ionosphere, which allows them to look through that magnifying glass at the ground and spy on people. So not only have they perfected the ionospheric mirror, they are now turned it into a lens and they can spy on you with it using a drone in space shooting lasers. Lasers are also being used as a source of ionization in clouds to make rainfall. Electrons and lasers beam excite aerosols, attracting water and inducing rainfall. Electric cloud seeding with lasers is cutting edge technology with massive implications for water security and battlefield alike. Damn, I wrote that. That's pretty good. Um, speaking of battlefield, lasers can also be used to steer lightning bolts. Shocking, I know. And you can see that right here. So this is DARPA testing what is called a laser-guided lightning bolt. And this is also known as uh, lightning channeling. Um, and the idea is simple. Uh, electricity will follow the path of least resistance. And if you go ahead and provide a laser channel, you can straighten that lightning bolt right out. And God forbid you take the, you know, an airborne laser, fly above a thunderstorm and shoot the laser through the top of it, you might be able to steer a lightning bolt at a target. Now that would be shocking indeed. Um, but you can see video of hacking the planet, laser guided lightning right there. 
Um, Hacking the Planet was a series that the Weather Channel did that literally ripped off my geoengineering page. Um, in order, they did seven episodes. I had seven articles. They did one episode per article I wrote. It was very flattering, to say the least. Articles include rain-making lasers could trigger showers on demand. Dressed laser aimed at clouds may be key to inducing rain and lightning. Lasers can be used to sear lightning. Mid-strike, artificial rain-making systems. But the big one right here I hope you guys will check out is cloud ionizers, electric rain-making, and laser-guided weather modification. Um, even Alex Jones had this printed out on his desk and held it up. He never read it. Um, didn't do an episode about it, but you know, shout out to Alex Jones for at least just mentioning it. But these cloud ionizers are the way of the future. Um, they've gone from just dumping chemtrails of cloud seeds to using negatively charged ions to make other particles already in the sky stick together to make rain. And you can see all of these. Now, of course, the WMO said, hey, ionization methods are, should be treated with suspicion statement on that because basically over in Abu Dhabi they claimed that this Mateo Systems WeatherTech cloud ionizer system made rain where there were no clouds um, in the desert. So of course the World Meteorological Organization's expert team on weather modification had a lot to say about that and put out that statement. We also have AST Clear Sky Manager, details on that, with patents and all that. Australian Rain Technologies, Cloud Ionizer, Atlant System, and uh, the list goes on. Acquiesce Global Rain Project, more on that bad boy at the end of this article. So let's go back. So that brings us to the next one. Um, also be sure to check out HARP Project Nimbus and F the Fire of the Gods about DARPA's brioche or basic research on ionospheric blah 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 um now to the one most people know about cloud seeding it's the oldest technology in this list it was invented in 1946 by vincent schaefer irving langmeyer and bernard vonnegut and uh they basically you know vincent schaefer breathed in a freezer and cloud seeding was born um, shortly thereafter, in 1949, Irving P. Crick invented the ground-based cloud seeder, and this allowed them to actually put towers near mountains to burn silver iodide on demand to do what's called snowpack augmentation. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see an older model, or I like to call the redneck model, with a big propane tank and just a burner. Over here is the fancy version with the solar panel, the internet connection, and can be operated remotely. <clears throat> Doesn't take a you know a, a, you know World War II veteran uh, to walk out there and actually light the fire. Um, so that's kind of a thing. Uh, over here we have the regular cloud seeding that's done by aircraft. They put flares, flare dispensers. This is what was used as a weapon in World War II. Um, can't make this stuff up. So, and here we have uh, the cloud seeding generator map. You can see all of that right here on climateviewer.org by going to geoengineering and weather modification and you can see all of the different cloud seeding generators right here they start wyoming weather modification pilot program um you can go through the list central colorado rocky mountain program grand mesa colorado cloud seeding project humboldt river basin uh, cloud seeding generators and carson walker basin which is around uh, lake tahoe um, enjoy that on your spring break and Santa Barbara California all the way over here Idaho Power Company boy they got a hell of a program here and these are also flight tracks where they fly the cloud seeding generators so my map ooh, my map climateviewer.org just a reminder all of this is free of charge open source advertisement free and I only accept this through my patreon and my PayPal so please remember to keep me at it. Um, I really appreciate that. The Russian Air Force, during a mission to clear skies, potentially rain-filled clouds, dropped a mixture of silver iodide, liquid nitrogen, and cement powder in an attempt to seed clouds. Quote, a pack of cement used for creating good weather in the capital region failed to pulverize completely at high altitude and fell through the roof of a house, making a hole about 80 to 100 centimeters Two, two and a half to three foot wide. <laughs> Can you imagine that? 
that literally they were doing weather modification with cement and just tossed the bag out the back <laughs> and that thing destroyed somebody's roof so that's the u.s uh or excuse me the russian air force doing weather modification there um but of course cloud seeding has been used as a weapon and we can see that here shortly after cloud seeding was invented project cirrus was the first attempt to steer a hurricane which then changed course and ran into georgia killed some people and did 3.2 million dollars in damage killed a person be very specific during operation popeye they had the u.s navy cold cloud modification system which was developed at china lake naval warfare center which still to this day develops weather modification weapons um and it's in california china lake go look it up cold cloud cloud seeding bombs used in uh operation popeye motor pool and the like but this is the one most people have never heard of um Another CIA plot, Cuba crops. Uh, but the seeding over Q near Cuba was to cause less rain, not more. It was supposed to squeeze rain out of the clouds before it reached the island. You might say we tried to embargo rain clouds. Mm. CIA and Henry Kissinger did both. What this was called Project Nile Blue and Operation Popeye without ever telling the Secretary of Defense, Melvin Laird, that they were doing it. So there's your Council of Foreign Relations, New World Order, globalist Henry Kissinger working with the CIA to do weather warfare in not only Vietnam but Cuba, and they did it all with cloud seeding. So you can only imagine what they're doing today. And here's a video of President Ahmadinejad saying that Europe is stealing its reign. Um, I mean, what do you do with that? Still going on to this day. Doesn't surprise me in the least. Links and details on all that right here. Um, in addition, check out Hurricane Hacking. The Department of Homeland Security enters the weather modification business because the Department of Homeland Security is now using cloud seeding with carbon black and other things as an excuse to steer hurricanes around. Now, we already covered cloud ionizers. I whipped through that article very briefly. Um, but th these technologies are new. Um, there's actually something now called the UAE Rainfall Enhancement Program. And this UAE Research Program, they're talking about using cloud seeding drones. And at this video, the U.S. Department of Agriculture talking to the, West, uh, the Weather Modification Association in uh, Texas, their licensing division, to get an exemption for the permit to do electric weather modification by dumping electric electrified water from planes they used an electrostatic sprayer or a bug sprayer a pesticide sprayer if any of you live in the south like i do i'm in sumter south carolina we get these uh, mosquito uh, spraying trucks that roll by that's what they used and the guy who did it um, I believe his name is bowman um, he works for the u.s department of agriculture so this is a government funded usda experiment with a guy who used to work for Monsanto using a Monsanto pesticide sprayer to electrify water and do weather modification experiments over Texas 2017. Since I put this video out, they have deleted his uh, profile on the U.S. Department of Agriculture website. I know you see what I did there. Links and details on all that right there and the USDA experiments to the, right here. Um, you can actually come over and watch that video. I did comments all through it and then this got more views than they've ever had in their life, which they asked, they literally asked in the video, said, please share this video on your social media. And I did. And, um, apparently they didn't appreciate it too much, especially the comments. Oh my gosh. Electrified rainmaking over Texas. I'll be watching you guys. Um, stratospheric aerosol injection. I don't know why I got two links here. What are they wrong? Uh, geoengineering, geoengineering. Okay. So basically this one, I just like got lazy because I talk about stratospheric aerosol injection a lot. Um, geoengineering is what it's called. Spraying chemicals into the stratosphere to block sunlight is a monumentally stupid idea and a deadly one. 
The academic uh, community acknowledges that attempts to mimic volcanoes by reflecting sunlight will alter rainfall patterns worldwide. For this reason, I devote an extreme amount of energy to the topic of geoengineering solar radiation management, SRM. Debating scientists since 2012, I've debated Ken Caldera, Stephen Salter, and the like in Ken Caldera's own forum from 2012 to 2014. Shortly thereafter, I was cited by the United Nations, taught at Harvard University. My material has been everywhere. You've seen it in so many people's documentaries. Um, I am the most ripped off guy on the internet when it comes to this topic. But do yourself a favor, go over to my geoengineering section. You can see things like an interview with Max Bliss I just did. Plant trees or geoengineering will kill billions. The Russian woodpecker, Chernobyl meltdown, ionospheric heating over the USA. And a couple others like the North Korea thing I was talking about. But it just goes on and on about geoengineering. And there's much to do in that section about this topic. So please dig into it. Many of you already know my work on geoengineering, so I'm focusing the majority of this article on the technologies people do not know about. 8, 9, and 10, cloud creation. Now, let's just remind everybody what the image looked like. So, what I had here was we've done 1 through 7 already. Now, 8, 9, and 10 are ship tracks, contrail cirrus, and water vapor pollution. Okay. So ship tracks and contrail induced cirrus. Contrail induced cirrus is what most people refer to as chemtrails. That is the planes you see making clouds. Um, ship tracks, what is that? Boats making clouds. Water vapor pollution, what is that? Things like wet surface air coolers or nuclear power plants and coal power plants making clouds. And they do that by putting water vapor into the air. So I got a little star down here and it says, 8, 9, and 10 are considered, by the scientific community, inadvertent, accidental, or pollution. That's kind of funny. Unless it's intentional. Objects not to scale include, does not include steering atmospheric rivers in here. That'll be at the bottom of this article. So, why are they considered accidental? Because they've been going on so long and nobody wants to admit that this is a serious problem. But back as far as 1976, they said, likely contrails are affecting precipitation to a much greater extent than present deliberate seeding operations, meaning that they have acknowledged for quite some time that jet engines are affecting weather, are screwing up the planet. Um, Chuck uh, Long from Na NASA CRES um, at the Earth Systems Research Lab referred to what planes were doing as accidental geoengineering. And that's so accidentally ironic because it's no longer an accident, especially when you see what they're doing with jet fuel, biofuels for contrail control. Um, the FAA scientist that I interviewed, Dr. Rangasai Halthori from the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative said, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. That is an intent. And with intent, it is no longer an accident. Um, I also mentioned things like the Mateotron, um, Russian experiments using jet engines to uh, make tornadoes and stuff. Uh, multiple Mateotron jet engines used in USSR in the 1970s for successful cloud formation experiments, as well as steering hurricanes. Uh, this is weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy, Gray et al. 76. And he literally says we can use carbon black dust to steer hurricanes. How will we do that? With jet engines, spraying it out of the back of even commercial planes in the carbon make section of the engine. Um, regardless, uh, Mosh Alamaro from MIT at the Department of Homeland Security Hurricane Modification Workshop said, hey, we can use those same ideas and put those jet engines on a barge and take them into a hurricane and spray a whole bunch of carbon black dust and do exactly what Gray et al. 76 talked about. So that was actually said in 2008. So this is not a conspiracy, people. These are actual facts. Here is a Taurus Molecular Cloud TMC-65 or improperly referenced TMS-65. This is a jet engine that's used to get chemical weapons off of tanks. But regardless, it's a jet engine and it makes clouds. And if you put a whole bunch of those guys out there, you can make all the clouds you want all day long. So how do you make these clouds? 
It's pretty simple. Jet fuel. These jet fuel, um, you know, the scientists will say, this is just water vapor. But that's not what really happens. It never, nothing's ever perfect. So this is what's supposed to happen in a perfect world. This is what actually happens. And if you see right here, it says sea soot. And if you go over here to sea soot, you'll see that you follow the little train down here and it says, oh, micro, microphysics and chemical reactions happen. And what happens? Clouds. So it's like a no-brainer at this point. And why does this matter? Because it affects climate change and it impacts agriculture, forestry, ecosystems, energy production, like solar energy. Surprise, surprise. Those who control the clouds can control the solar industry. Who controls the clouds? The fossil fuel industry. So if you think they don't want to make clouds to shut up solar power, you're crazy. Also, social effects. I think we've all seen that. Anybody who's ever talked about chemtrails, you're having social effects and damages, welfare loss, e.g. monetary units. So they've actually proven that people buy less stuff on cloudy days. As crazy as that sounds. I mean, there are a million implications for making clouds and why it's a bad idea and should not happen. But regardless, all the aluminum, strontium, and titanium you need is already in that jet fuel. Oh, wait, there's a ton of calcium. David Keith also mentioned using calcium as an alternative to using titanium and aluminum for geoengineering. When the military's NATO planes in 20-something countries all switched from gasoline to diesel fuel, aluminum in the sky from 1988 to 1997 switched from 2,000 parts per billion to 9,000 parts per billion. Calcium went from 5,000 parts per billion to 31,000 parts per billion, and that should have been an arrow. I've since learned that calcium is way more important than the stuff everybody was focused on in the chemtrail community when I made this image when I found it in the PDF. So this one should have a big circle and a star around it. Shout out to Jim Phelps. Going to interview him about that sometime soon, hopefully. Um, video footage of that TMC um, 65 making them clouds. Looks like this. There's your little cloud making jet engine on the ground. At ground level, as they would say. But yeah, that... That's a pretty, pretty big cloud, guys. Um, jet engines make clouds. And they have many ways to do it. But it's jet fuel, mostly. Loaded with metals. Articles and details on that. Could go on about that at length. But these are no longer accidents. Um, saying that airplane contrails may be creating accidental geoengineering is no longer... Um, gonna rub with us because we've gone way past accidental same is true with ship tracks um, check all that stuff out so the bonus right here is steering rivers in the sky now this is the one that is the creepiest to me is the least documented and basically involves somebody who scares the hell out of me <laughs> um, but a guy from a company called Cyblu named Lieutenant Colonel David Kaczynski, he's retired. He's a real American hero. He trained ninjas at the FBI in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He dives out of airplanes. He's a sniper. Um, he is a hacker. He's a private investigator. And he makes bottled water. He, he custom-bred a bacteria for the BP oil spill. And guess what? He is involved with weather control. And he wrote a paper called Steering the Rivers of the Troposphere. And in it he said, Water will be to the next century what oil was to the last. And he's referring to something called the Blue Gold Rush. And what does geoengineering have in common with all of these technologies? Geoengineering will affect rainfall patterns worldwide. So this, everything you're seeing here is about control of resources, control of water. So Cyblu paired up with a company called Acquiesce. I mentioned them previously, just briefly, in the cloud ionization section. And they use something they call weather resonance technology. And it's right here up. This is their infograph. Acquiesce has intervened in over 40 rainfall projects, many on a massive scale. And it says ground stations, signals. Ground stations, signals. These are microwaves, people. 
This is not a surprise to me. Signals are launched from ground-based servers to adjust flight paths of weather systems. This is about as smoking gun evidence of every crazy thing you ever heard as you can find. In the 1990s, MIT's Atmospheric Lab conducted field trials in non-conventional weather modification technologies. Atmospheric resonance technology represented by Aqueous International. The core technology and primary um, intellectual property are protected by treaties and strict security protocols which surround the project according to Aqueous who, after I put a lengthy article and video together about this, promptly deleted their damn website. So you will need to go to archive.org, which I have provided a link to. Let's see if they've broken my specific link. Ooh, there it is. And this is what Acquiesce's website used to look like. I don't care what that said, cancel. But regardless, here we are. Doppler radar pictured there. Bunch of creepy stuff here. Talking about weather resonance and atmospheric rivers so this is the creepiest of the technologies this is actually the ceo of the company david miles talking about high-tech rain making using their system and here is that quote about the blue gold um fresh water has been dubbed blue gold in many publications as potable water will be to this century what oil was to the last century um and then what did they do? Mr. Kaczynski's company went to the Texas Weather Modification Board. Surprise, surprise. Texas just loves trying new stuff. Um, not only did they allow the USDA Monsanto guy to spray electrified weather, they basically gave a exemption status for a proposed rainfall enhancement by George Bomar introduced David Kaczynski and here is the link to that actual document you can see it right here where they got permission to do what you're about to see here this is a proposed expanded 2012 aqueous sky blue primary tar target region moisture feed plan how to get the atmospheric river into texas seven day rainfall anomaly as you can see anomaly means it is not normal and you can see up here at the top, the purple pink areas are off the charts. So they're claiming success, much success, great success. And as you can see, Aquius is offering sovereign states an augmented rainfall capability as a part of its new regional toolbox to strengthen economies, replenish dry land agriculture, and improve food security with their top secret, creepy, protected by treaties and strict security protocol weather resonance technology believe it or not this is the creepiest thing that i know of i wish more people would talk about um cloud ionization and steering atmosphere at rivers um but this is this is it and this is from their thing the contracted target was red bluff reservoir and the expanded target texas to address drought Image number two, the plan was to provide safe moisture feed to deliver our signature gentle soaking rains right there. Uh, number three, by May 15th, we had achieved rainfall anomaly over Texas from the planned SSE direction. Um, and then whoop, mosquito, get off me. Um, NOAA departure from normal 30 year rain shows good May 12th rain and with acquiesce proposed path May 3rd, 2012. Well, as a result, here's a little before and after. And this is the U.S. Drought Monitor, and they claimed great success. Rain like this is only the first phase of our drought-breaking services that are offered to USA and international communities experiencing water and food shortages, says the company CEO. Um, and the, the list goes on. Details on this. I wrote an extensive article about this, um, How Texas Stole California's Rain. And I found it very interesting <coughs> that... While California was experiencing a lot of drought, when atmospheric rivers used to reach in through the L.A. basin on a regular basis, um, for those who've never seen an atmospheric river, I guess we could bring this little animation up right here. Let you see that real quick. I don't think there's even sound with this thing, but rivers in the sky. 
and they're everywhere. Um, atmospheric rivers transport 90% of the moisture from equatorial regions towards there. There is the moisture plume. These are what they look like, and this is their goal. They realize that cloud seeding doesn't really work that well if you don't have water in the sky. And where does that water come from? It comes from these atmospheric, atmospheric rivers. rivers are global scale moisture transport systems that drive the majority of moisture redistribution from the tropics to higher latitudes. These systems of transport are highly important in connection with the replenishment of water resources in many areas around the world. However, they are also influenced by climate change, extreme weather events, and people who want to steer the freaking weather. So yes, they are inf influenced by a lot of stuff. Um, and especially people like this and this is the actual acquiesce video where they brag about their thing i i'm very nosy oh, i hit the dang wrong button that's just criminal i hit my go up button instead of uh let's find it again oh it's still playing so according to acquiesce their own little literature Acquiesce draws on high quality data and imaging sources like the US Naval Research Lab and all this all these satellites and sensors and we we really know what we're doing, you know, because you know we're just, you know, hanging out with all the big dogs at the US Naval Research Lab and NOAA's airborne this and and this is all helping governments and we know what we're doing here. We're gonna steer atmospheric rivers at will. So while everybody's focused on ooh, what is that? U.S. Naval Research Lab online services and resources form an extensive part of Acquiesce Decision Support Platform. They didn't um, want to talk about that when I interviewed the U.S. Naval Research Lab at the Weather Modification Conference I just went to, but I'll be sure to ask them about it next time. Um, so, what does it look like? You know, they they really don't have any pictures of their material. They don't want to, um, you know, talk about it. But basically supercomputers and ground-based radars that are mobile remote weather stations oh that's just a weather station that's not actually what we're using and proprietary intellectual property so is this actual signals generator that they're talking about in that i don't know if you guys can find me any information on acquiesce or cyblu this weather resonance technology and the actual signal generators i'll be the first to put it out there because nobody else is even talking about this and i've been talking about it for damn near three years um so let's just wrap it up right there so in conclusion that's why i talk about what i'm doing um you know i wanted to attend this conference i did you can see it over on my end mod page right below here trip to 21st uh conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification you can see all of the videos where I interviewed the U.S. Naval Research Lab and Raytheon and all of these guys that were there. Um, and I want to continue to bring light to you know this dark world of and secret world of geoengineering, weather modification, and weaponizing nature. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, and I hope that you guys will get educated on these ten technologies because. Once the secret's out of the box, once more people know that it isn't just chemtrails, it isn't just, you know, planes making clouds over your house that you should be concerned about, there is much going on here. And it has a lengthy history going back to two presidents that shot their mouth off and the rest have shut up since Vietnam. Because weather warfare was banned. And the problem with that is... When they banned this weather warfare, they never really came up with a way to catch anybody doing it. And that is exactly what I'm proposing with the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. That's why this article to the 10 Technologies is right here at the top. Because we need to update the weather warfare ban of 1978 to include all of the present technologies to require that if anybody wants to modify the weather that they are going to have to tell us in advance so that we know what their intention is and if you're being hostile or if you hurt people that you can be held accountable for that and the only way we're going to be able to do that is with sensors to catch them in the act so not only do i propose that the government make open source every single atmospheric sensor they have i hope to create one myself 
and I hope to you know integrate other sensors from around the globe into Climate Viewer 3D so that we can get in here and really start looking at what's going on on a daily basis. Um, this is very important to me. I hope that you guys will share this video um, and that we can, you know, really start to get an idea of what's going on out there because it's getting kind of creepy. Um, and, you know, people are screwing with our weather on a daily basis. We've got, you know, contrails, ship tracks, and all this creepy stuff going on on a daily basis highlighted right there on the 367 band. You can see them through the clouds. That is not a coincidence. If you were to look at this in the regular color, yeah, it's visible, but they literally have a specific band that just highlights the damn things for them. So this is global weather modification on a scale that most people cannot imagine. And if you were to try to tell this to your average person in a barbershop, they'd probably look at you sideways. But just with this single article alone, it is well referenced. There's the infographic. You can send it to your senator, send them a link to this, and they can go through it and realize that everything I just told you is 100% truth backed up by credible resources. And that's what I do at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weather modification history. Come over to the environmental warfare section on environment. Um, on uh, weather modification history by going over here to tags, clicking on environmental warfare, and you can read all about all of these creepy things, these FOIAs from the government, the government meetings on how they're going to own the weather in 2025, how they presented it at a test technology symposium in 97, the FOIAs that I have, Freedom of Information Act requests, all point towards using carbon black dust to do weather warfare for the same purposes that we did in Vietnam, for the same purposes we did over Cuba. Weather warfare is a real thing. It is still ongoing. I just did a video on that intro to weather warfare, weather modification history hour, episode one. I will be doing more of those on Throwback Thursdays. So tune in to weather modification history on Facebook where you'll check out the live video. I will mirror that to my YouTube and you can subscribe to my YouTube right up here at the top. Um, if I if I missed anything, if you didn't see it in this video and you, you're going, why wasn't that in there? Uh, be sure to hit me up on the email um, or any one of my social media. I'd appreciate that. And please continue to support my work. All of this is supported by you. Thank you to my 18 patrons so far. I really appreciate you guys. And I do hope to see you guys in the chat room. So come up here to the top of climateviewer.com and just click the link. It'll be right here. Um, right there on the chat button and uh, join the conversation where we're not censoring a thing we're just having an open discussion so that's it 10 technologies to own the weather today not in 2025 and this is uh, some serious business please share this video with everybody you can um, please study it yourself this just this one article um, took me seven years worth of research to put together something like this. So I hope that you will go through these references um, and, and educate yourself and then educate others. Um, and when you do that, remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work. So come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.